Kikona Akida was a chemist that used to be a professor in the University of Tokyo. Kikona would do unusual things compared to his colleagues and that's what he was famous for. One of those was that he wouldn't eat anybody's food but his wife's. When someone offered him food, he said I'd rather be hungry than eat this food. That's how much he liked his wife's cooking. Year after year, the professor did this and then he became suspicious on why he does this. He questions himself why he only likes his wife's cooking. He became so curious that he decided to stay home just to see how his wife cooks and what does she do to make this food so goddamn good. He watched her cook the meal the whole time but he didn't see anything special. But he realized that before she started cooking, she took a leaf plant and put it in a pot of hot water. And after a few minutes of boiling, she took out the plant and threw it away. The professor realized that there's something to do with this plant and he started investigating it. This is a type of seaweed called kelp and you can't call it a plant. Professor Akita realized that this is not unusual and a lot of Japanese people put this in their food. And since he was a chemist himself, he couldn't let this go this easily. He decided to study kelp and actually take a sample to his laboratory to see it up close and analyze it. Akita very quickly realized when he was analyzing the leaf that it contains glutamic acid and this is an amino acid. When he continued and researched harder, he realized that in the mother's milk, there is a lot of this amino acid as well. So the first thing that tastes good to a human is basically glutamic acid because there's plenty of it in your mother's milk. So Professor Akita came to a realization that our brains evolved in a way that it's wired to love glutamic acid and anything that has it tastes better. Professor Akita realized that anything that actually tastes good has this substance in it, either a lot of it or just a little bit of it. Cheese, meat, fish, mushrooms and plenty of other things have a lot of glutamic acid and that is why we love eating them. You have to realize that this is 1907 where the professor is doing this research and at this time there is four different tastes that we have realized. It's sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. But Professor Akira said that we have to add one more taste to this list. The umami taste, which basically means deliciousness in Japanese. It seems like the story is over now, but no, it just started. Because the professor realized that he has to purify this acid and put it in pure form so he can use it. He quickly became successful and he was able to purify glutamic acid and made it into a form that looks like a white powder, something you can compare to salt. He also gave it a name, the monosodium glutamate. And what you're seeing is the chemical formula. Since this name is very long, scientists have shortened it to MSG. You might be familiar with MSG or monosodium glutamate because there's a lot of containers that contain food and it has this writing on it. Like a bag of chips. It's delicious, right? It's all because it's packed with MSG. And if it didn't have this substance, you wouldn't even look at it. That's how bad it would taste. Without MSG, you're just eating a paste of potato that smash together and fry. But the MSG gives it life and flavor. So monosodium glutamate or MSG has to be bad for us, right? Because some foods that claim to be quote unquote healthy have a mark that says no MSG or no added MSG. So that means MSG is bad. No, it's more complicated than that because the main problem is not the MSG itself. It's the food or stuff around the MSG that causes a problem with this substance. The monosodium glutamate is a very important substance that the human body needs and it's one of the first things you eat. In the year 1968, the US media started spreading false information about MSG 
and they would tell people to stop eating Chinese food because there's a lot of MSG in their food. But at that time, nobody even knew what the hell MSG is. Just because the news showed it to them, they would stop eating it. Of course, back then, the news article would update every day. One day it would say MSG gives you headaches, it gives you diabetes, it raises blood pressure, and many, many negative effects on the human body. All this fake news turned MSG into a poison. Even the term MSG was an engineered method of speaking because that's not the actual name for this substance. It's the scientific name. It's the short version of monosodium glutamate. So it's gonna sound more scary than the actual name the Japanese gave it back in the day. It's kind of like referring to salt as sodium chloride. It sounds more scary. The actual name they put on this seasoning is called Ajinomoto, but they used MSG to make it sound scary. But we have a question. Why do they say MSG is addictive? From birth, our brain is hardwired to love MSG, like chicken, fish, meat, mother's milk, tomatoes, eggs, and many, many good tasting foods that have a lot of protein. But in chips, there is no MSG or protein. In fast food, there isn't any because there's no quality. In white bread, which is the worst type of bread, there is nothing. And many, many other junk foods aren't supposed to have MSG, but unfortunately, they are added on. There is no natural MSG in potato chips or corn chips. It's added so you love it and you want to keep eating it. When you eat chips with MSG on it, you're basically tricking your brain. You trick your brain into thinking you're eating something very nutritious and high in protein, so it tells you to continue eating it and make yourself full. And that is why when someone opens a bag of chips, they usually continue eating it until it's done. If we didn't have MSG in pure form and you couldn't put it on fast food and junk food, no fast food restaurant would be successful because their food will taste like school food or prison food. Nobody would buy bags of chips because when you would try it out once, you would hate it and never buy it again. So it's not that our body loves junk food, it just loves the MSG that's inside the junk food and tricks our brain into thinking we're eating something healthy. The worst foods that you could buy that have MSG added to them is in Healthline, and there's a list of it. The worst one is fast food restaurant, different types of chips, frozen foods, soups that you warm up, processed meat like sausages and ham and pepperoni, different types of sauce, low quality noodles, all of them have MSG added. So we realize that the MSG's job today is to turn low quality food into something that tastes good and you can buy it. So MSG is not bad for humans. It's the problem that's around the MSG, the junk food. You could buy monosodium glutamate anywhere you want. And just like we said, it looks like salt and it's considered a food enhancer because it really makes it taste better. A lot of factories buy this and put it in low quality food like sausages and make it taste better. But normal people can buy it and enhance their own food. This was exactly what Professor Aikida's wife was doing to her food to make it taste better. But she was doing it the old fashioned way in the Japanese way where they did it with kelp. But now you could buy the seasoning and do that yourself. Nowadays, the MSG is considered a seasoning for your food and you could mix it with your salt, pepper and other spices to make your food taste better and enhance the taste. But if you add it to low quality food, it will be terrible for you, but it will taste better, just like chips. 